So here's what we'll be working towards in this episode. Here's our terminal. We can type in a command such as help and you can see that it gives a custom response. The terminal then instructs you with other commands that you can type in whereby typing those in gives back a different response. And this way you can kind of create interesting text adventure style stuff for your game. So as a quick overview of how this terminal is going to work, so far we've created this terminal manager.c sharp script that allows us to open up a terminal, type in an input field, press enter, and that string is stored in this variable called user input. Now we're going to create another C sharp script called the interpreter, whereby when we hit enter, the user input string is going to be sent over to this interpret method. As you can see, it takes in this user input variable and it's going to return a list of strings. Now the reason we're returning a list of strings and not just a single string is because we don't want to limit ourselves to only being able to return and print one line at a time. Maybe we want to print five or ten lines at a time. So that user input string is going to be compared to different strings and this can be done with a switch statement or it can be done with multiple if statements. So if that user input string matches one of these if statements and this evaluates to true then we're going to add you know one or more strings to this list so we'll say here's one help command here's a second help command here's a third help command and then we will return that list back to the terminal manager so at this point the terminal manager will have a list that the interpreter created based on its interpretation of the string and then we're going to print or instantiate a message for each of these things in the list. So we're back in Unity now. Let's create a new C sharp script called interpreter. If you're interested in having your interpreter really interact with a lot of the different objects and components in your game, then leave it as a non static class and have it inherit from model behavior. If you're just looking to achieve simple behavior where it returns text and it doesn't actually affect anything in your game, then you can make it static and you'll have a bit of an easier time referencing it. We're going to keep it non-static and we're going to actually put it onto the UI game object in our scene. Let's make a method that returns a list of strings called interpret. Public list string interpret takes in that user input and we'll call it user input. So the first thing that we should do here is make a global variable called response. Now every time that this terminal is queried, the first thing that we want to do is clear whatever was in the list last time, because we don't want the messages piling up between separate interpretations. So now we have an empty list. So now when the user sends a string over, it's going to potentially have multiple commands in it. So for example, maybe they'll type help dash dash um, commands or something like that and you want to be able to separate these things by um, the different arguments that they've supplied. And so we'll create an array of strings called the arguments and we'll take that user input and we'll split it and if we don't pass an argument into split it will automatically split the string at spaces. And so you can tell your player the syntax that they need to obey in order for the interpreter to actually work. So we'll say if args at zero is equal to help, then we can return some info. So we can say something like response.add. If you want to use the terminal, type oops, boop. 
we'll escape those quotes. And we'll add another response, response.add. This is the second line that we are returning. And we'll say else response.add command not recognized type help for a list of commands. Awesome. Now, obviously, we have to return the response if the argument at zero actually correctly matched something. And so this is just our generic, I couldn't understand what you're trying to say line. If it doesn't match this and it doesn't match the next one and it doesn't match the next one, then just say, I couldn't recognize that type help and that will hopefully redirect the player to figure out what they need to do. So let's go back into Unity here. Let's grab our UI and let's add the interpreter onto the UI. Now we'll go back into Visual Studio, into the Terminal Manager script, and let's write a script called void, or we'll actually make it return an int. Add interpreter lines. Now this takes in that list of strings that was passed back to us from the interpreter and we'll call this the interpretation. So this is going to be a lot like this one here. We can actually copy some of the lines and you might find a better way to consolidate this code, but we'll just do it this way for now. So basically we want to loop through all of the strings in this list and say for int i equals zero i less the interpretation count i plus plus and we will do some stuff eventually we will want to return how many lines were actually in the interpretation because if there was above a certain number of lines then maybe we want to automatically scroll to the bottom um, of the console if the command lines now exceed the height of that scroll rect. So first we will instantiate the response line. Game object. We can call this message again or we can call it, you know, res for response. Instantiate. This is a reference to the actual response line now and again we want its parent to be the message list we're going to set it to the end of all of the messages we will say that it's transform sibling index needs to be the last sibling Keep in mind that we just have to make sure that we're setting the user input line as the last sibling, as the last call in our method. You can keep setting the last sibling because these are all executed in the same frame. So as long as they're occurring in the right order, you'll get things set in the correct order. Now let's get the size of the message list. Vector to list size is message list get component rect transform. I want the size delta. Namespace conflicts. And resize. We will say message list get component rect transform new vector to takes in list size dot x list size dot y and we want to once again add 35 pixels because that is the height of our line. I want to set the text 
of this response line to be whatever the interpreter string is. The response line, get component in children type text. Now this only has one text component, so we don't have to do that uh, array indexing as we did before. Say so dot text equals the interpretation at i. So this just means this is the list and this is the actual message in that list in this iteration of the for loop. So now let's scroll up to the top here and get a reference to our interpreter. Interpreter, interpreter. And we will say in our start method, interpreter equals get component interpreter. So now we have a reference to our interpreter. We can come back to our on GUI method. And say, after we've added our directory lines, add the interpretation lines. We'll say int lines equals add interpreter lines and the string that or the list of strings that we're going to pass into that comes from the interpreter calling interpret with the user input passed into it. Now this will still execute the method and it will also return the number of lines that it got back into this int variable here. From there, we want to maybe scroll to the bottom of the scroll rect. So we can make a method called scroll to bottom that takes in the number of lines. We'll come down here, create a method called scroll to bottom. It takes in the number of lines. And we'll say maybe if lines is greater than four, set the velocity of the scroll rect to be maybe 450 along the y-axis. That will give us smooth scrolling if there's a lot of lines being returned. Else we can just take the scroll rect and set its vertical normalized position to zero, which is the bottom of the scroll rect. Now right now we don't have any responses that are going to be greater than four lines, but eventually we're going to create ASCII titles and we will be happy that we implemented this because it should automatically work at that point. So one thing I forgot to do is when I actually initialize this variable, I need to say list string response is a new list string. Now I've come back into Unity. I'm going to test this out. I will type in help. And there we go. We can see if you want to use the terminal type boop, this is the second line that we are returning. If we go back into our interpreter, here we can create another string that the interpreter will understand. Boop. Response.add. Thank you for using the terminal return the response. Let's test this guy out. Help. Boop. Wonderful. So as you can tell, it's very easy to now create a large list of commands that your terminal can understand. Okay, so that's it for this episode. Next episode, we're going to start to create helper methods in our interpreter script which will allow us to nicely color everything um, using the rich text feature that Unity has implemented.